Square Stock, Block Stock, whatever you want to call this company, it has been under the pump, enduring a lot of pain over the past six months, over the past year. Let me show you. This stock is down over 4.61% over the past one day alone. Year to date, now down 37.41%. This stock is taking some pain. One year returns, down 59.86%. And why, you may ask. Why, you may say, why is Square down so much? Why is Block down so much over the past 12 months? Well, think about the type of stocks that have been punished by this marketplace. Think about the type of stocks that have been suffering in the market more broadly. Number one, growth predicated equities. Companies with the vast majority of their valuation, the vast majority of their worth, placed out in the future. And how do we identify these type of stocks? How do we tell if a stock has its growth priced down the future and not grounded in present valuation? Well, the simple way, the easy way to identify that is to look at the PE ratio. Look at the current PE of a company like Square. If you look at the PE, you'll find that it is absolutely massive. A current PE of 300 and 9.82 indicating that the vast majority of worth in this equity, the vast majority of tangible valuation, is placed down in the future. And naturally with raising rates, naturally with inflation at an all-time high, 40-year high, and rates increasing to combat that, stocks like this, stocks with so much of their valuation priced down in the future, they're going to suffer. And that's why Square's down. That's one reason Square's down. The second, I believe the market has come to the realization that it is the, the time to buy companies with a large degree of underlying financial strength rather than those companies with speculative value. Companies like the Microsoft, company, companies like the McDonald's, companies like the Coca-Cola, the PepsiCo, look at the stocks that people are running to right now. Companies with strong underlying fundamentals. And yet, when you look at Block, is any of that there? Is any of that strong underlying fun, fundamental quality there? Or is it a stock that was largely propped up on speculative assumptions. A stock that was held up so heavily, so rapidly, by this underlying thought of what it could be rather than what it is. You know, I see the stock down 63.57% from its high, massive, massive declines. But when you look at the underlying quality, the fundamentals of this business relative to what it was trading at, I'm not really sure if you can blame investors. The cash to debt ratio, yes, does appear fairly healthy. A cash to debt ratio of 1.48 indicating that if Block's management so desired, the current block head of the company could, could pay down all the debt on their balance sheet if they so desired. So a fairly advantageous cash to debt position, fairly high Altman score, Altman score of 5.12. On the surface, that looks financially stable. It looks like a large degree of underlying financial quality for the business, a large degree of stability. But quite frankly, this marketplace right now, this marketplace predicated by fear, by doubt, by anxiety around these type of stocks, doesn't care about cash debt on hand. It doesn't about care about the height of the Altman score. All it cares about is that valuation, that forward PE. And then with that forward PE being still 78 relative to the current PE of 331, that's far too high. And a marketplace this stressed out, this doubtful, this is the type of stock that's going to be punished. It's the type of stock that has been punished. Now you might talk about profitability. You might say, well, you know, Square's a fintech and naturally, Fintechs often exude a high degree of profitability. Low marginal costs and advantageous industry, advantageous secular trends around the business. Naturally, the net margin should be fairly advantageous. That's not the case with Square. With Square, you've got barely any profitability at present. Net margins of only 0.94%. Operating margins of only 1.31%. Very, very low degree of profitability. And you may say, well, you know, Lockheed's a growing business. It's a compounding business building up over time. Naturally, there's going to be lower net margins. I understand that. I acknowledge that. I understand that sentiment. But by that same token, you look at another growing fintech, a company like PayPal. PayPal's maintaining net margins of 16%. Almost 16 times the height of the net margins for Square. In fact, more than 16 times the current net margins for Square. So in this inflationary environment, where we need pricing power, where we need companies that can exude a great degree of pricing power, increase their margins over time. Does Square have the margins to increase? Do they have that pricing power? Evidently not. 
net margins simply haven't got to a point where they have that degree of inflation hedge quality yet. So, that lack of profitability on a fundamental level combined with low returns on equity, low returns on assets, signifying not only a lacking of quality in their underlying business, but also a lack of managerial competency in terms of long-term capital allocation, you know, the concerns continue to mount. Concerns continue to build up around this company, not only on a new speculative level, but also on a fundamental business level. And when that happens, when the fundamental quality of a company is lacking, that is when I start to get concerned. We also have share dilution. The three-year average share buyback ratio of negative 3.7, indicating dilution with the company, which would signify, you know, you're slowly owning less and less of this business, which isn't an advantageous position to be in as a long-term shareholder. Now, let's see how that P-E ratio, obviously very high, but let's see how that transitions to tangible growth going forward. Let's analyze on a fundamental level how much growth is actually taking place within Square or Block, whatever you want to call the company. Well, based upon the current earnings and given the inconsistencies of earnings over the past decade, naturally it's been a, a growing company, compounding over time. And so we don't have consistent earnings growth rates over the past 10 or five year period, not even over the past one year. In the past one year, in fact, we have a negative growth rate of negative 25%. The only numbers we have to really go off in relation to this company are the revenue growth rates. Revenue growth rates of 47.6% over the past five years and a one-year revenue growth rate of 78.7%. So, a fairly impressive degree of revenue growth taking place, but that is not accreting into free cash flow and is not accreting into earnings per share. So, how do we make a tangible valuation? How do we make an accurate valuation without speculating on this company? Well, it's a very difficult challenge. To get to the current valuation, to get to the current valuation of around $100 a share, $102 a share, we'd have to price in consistent growth over the next decade of 53% annually. A 53% growth rate going forward over the next decade would yield us the current, current stock price relative to the current trading price. 53% growth. 53% growth consistently over the next decade, even for the smallest of firms. Even for a startup in its infancy, 53% growth consistently over the course of a decade, that's very difficult to price out. Even slight growth variations, even if growth over the past decade only went down to 45%, only for increased 4% in value, look at the difference. Look at the difference in price target that that slight growth variation makes. 53 versus 45. 53% growth rate, we have the current price target. 45% growth rate, you know, it's almost halved. That's the type of risk that is present with those high growth rates pricing out going forward. So, in this inflationary environment, in this doubtful environment, in this painful environment for investors, an environment in which we're looking for stability, high quality businesses with a large degree of pricing power and underlying financial strength, is this really the company you want to own? Is this really the company you want to be buying into? With such, with such slight growth assumption changes can massively impact the valuation of the company? I don't believe so. I don't think this is the place right now to have your money. I don't believe that going forward, the upside present in this company is worth the inherent risk. Yes, Block could succeed going forward. Yes, with their movements in a cryptocurrency, I believe they could do fairly well over the next 10, 15 years. But at present, based upon the lack of fundamental quality, the lack of financial strength, profitability, the lack of a appealing valuation at present, the stock continues to not be a buy for me. It continues to not, to not pose a very appealing risk to reward ratio. So if you enjoyed this video, if I'll give you some insight to my current thoughts on Block as a company relative to the fintech space more broadly and relative to the market as a whole, then please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or a topic you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.